Hello from the UK and firstly, thank you for inviting me to present. It's a real privilege to address this gathering in Thessaloniki and to be part of this fantastic event. Fifteen years ago, I saw that the internet was about to change everything and I wanted to be part of that. So I founded a research and training consultancy which today is called Creation Healthcare. We saw then that if the internet was going to change people's lives, it was going to be especially effective in the area of healthcare. And today, we advise global health and healthcare organizations about how to be effective in the digital age. Now, in the same year as Creation Healthcare was founded, 1998, in the UK, a company called doctors.net.uk started providing email addresses to doctors and it grew into the UK's leading dedicated closed doctors network. Since then, we've seen closed doctors networks all over the world, in Japan, in China, in the USA, in Europe. With a few exceptions, most of these are country-specific networks. They provide a range of services for doctors, including discussion forums where doctors can share ideas with peers. Now, some years ago, the British Medical Journal, the, the BMJ, took this a step further and they created Doc2Doc, a network that was, I believe, the first of these closed networks to include, in addition, an open forum area where discussion takes place in view of the public and also in view of other doctors who are not yet part of the Doctor Dot network. So now, doctors anywhere in the world could find discussions taking place among their peers and because this network was an open environment they could find these discussions using mainstream digital channels and search engines such as for example Google. And doctors increasingly started using other mainstream and open channels to discover and share information and to collaborate with their peers. Healthcare professionals are using not only open doctors networks, but now uh, Wikipedia, Twitter, Google+, and their own blogs too. And doctors communities started to develop within these open platforms, such as Twitter chats like hashtag MedEd, where thousands of doctors all over the world share ideas about medical education. Now, the opportunity for doctors to collaborate internationally, I would suggest, was a real game changer for healthcare professionals. Doctors could now easily learn from peers located anywhere in the world. As an example of the global reach of doctors in social media, here are the top 1,000 locations of doctors in social media from Creation Pinpoint. Creation Pinpoint is a tool that studies conversations taking place among healthcare professionals in public social media channels like Twitter, Google+, forums and blogs. And you can see here there are doctors in every world region collaborating together. We see Japan, we see California, Venezuela, Madrid, Mexico, Canada, we see Australia and Korea and yes, we see Greece too. And the numbers are growing every day. Creation Pinpoint is currently looking at conversations among around 120,000 individuals, including all kinds of healthcare professionals, from primary care physicians to nurses, pharmacists, and specialists of every kind. And you can see the growth in doctors' use of social media here in this chart, which shows the volume of conversations among healthcare professionals talking about the topic of diabetes during the same two-month window, January to February, in 2011, 2012, and then 2013. And you can see it's over 200% growth in conversation levels in two years among healthcare professionals in social media. So how is social media changing the lives of doctors? I'll show you three ways. Firstly, Sharing medical education. 
Here's a quote from Mike Cadogan. He's a, an emergency physician working in Australia, and he's one of the champions behind a doctor's Twitter chat called hashtag FOAM, F-O-A-M, for free open access medicine. Now, at the launch of FOAM, one of the things he said was uh, it was a place where doctors could learn from each other openly, without, effectively without uh, commercial intrusion. And I spoke with Mike recently and he was telling me that social media is such a leveler. It levels the playing field. He can learn from and he can exchange ideas with peers at any level, anywhere in the world, anytime. And here's a look at worldwide coverage for another Twitter chat, hashtag MedEd, where doctors share medical education information with each other. And you can see that People all over the world are taking part. Another incredible way in which social media is changing the lives of doctors and therefore changing the lives of patients is in real-time peer support, even in emergency situations. Now, Twitter is especially effective for this, and here are some examples that we've recently seen in Creation Pinpoint. Firstly, here's uh, an emergency physician asking about seizures in a patient. I've blurred out the identities of the users uh, so we can just see the conversation taking place. Uh, and the physicians in this discussion are, are based in the United States, they're based in Spain, and they're based in the UK. We see international collaboration. You can see that they're discussing details about the seizure itself and about the treatment. And here's another example. This time the physicians are based in Costa Rica. They're based in uh, Canada, in Italy, and I think the United States too. And they're talking about treating a 22-year-old male with acute onset atrial fibrillation. So we see Twitter especially used in this context where a rapid response is requested from peers anywhere else in the world. What a way to share experiences in real time. And a third way that social media is changing the lives of doctors and patients is doctors are learning about approaches to diagnosis and treatments from each other. They're talking about new drugs. They're talking about clinical trials. And here in this example from the Doc to Doc network, we see collaboration between healthcare professionals, between doctors, around treating an individual patient. And over several days, doctors who are based in the UK, in uh, New Zealand, and in India are talking about an individual patient case, and they're talking about tests, results, the patient's history, until eventually they reach a diagnosis together. Now, when we built Creation Pinpoint, we asked the question, what if we produced a big data repository of all those incredible conversations taking place between doctors? Could it provide a tool for new knowledge? Well, let's take a look at Creation Pinpoint to see. A Creation Pinpoint is available as a live dashboard that you can use online with direct access to data, or you can have email alerts sent to you when doctors mention a particular topic that you might be interested in, or you can have a set of analysed reports produced for you by our team at Creation Healthcare. And here what we'll do is we'll look at the live dashboard uh, option. Now behind Creation Pinpoint is a massive database analyzing millions of social media profiles and then refining these to a set of currently around 120,000 individuals and these are then manually reviewed and tagged uh, by a human review to ensure the quality of the data itself. So let's get straight into a creation pinpoint dashboard. So here we see a particular dashboard that we've set up for a study into doctors worldwide talking about the topic of diabetes and diabetes-related topics. And we see here the top 10 sites and uh, forums and boards that are, are, are being used by doctors to discuss the topic. And we see that right at the top of the list are B BMJ, British Medical Journal-related sites. So there's the blogs, uh, British Medical Journals, and the Dr. Doc uh, forum. And we can look in and we can see the mentions within any one of those sites or forums or blogs. And um, here's a particular view looking at uh, Dr. Doc forums. And uh, we can click through and find out 
the detail behind any of these. We can really see the actual entry itself, um, or we can look at it at a summary level. So if we want to look at a particular entry, it'll show us here and it highlights within that entry uh, the kind of diabetes-related keywords that Creation Pinpoint has found and, and identifying why it's included this particular entry in the study itself. And we can literally scroll through this and, and we can uh, uh, we can categorize it and we can decide to to uh, flag it for for later follow up or, or further investigation. We might be interested in looking at things in a more general way in terms of topics being discussed uh, and so on. So if we close that window, um, we can, there are a lot of other tabs here on these dashboards that we can get to. This one's quite interesting to have a look at the topics as a topic cloud. So this is giving us um, just broadly the overview of topics being discussed in just these particular channels that we're looking at here at the moment, which are blogs and forums and sites and so on. And we see BMJ group coming up really uh, uh, large there. And then we see specific topics, uh, cardiovascular events uh, being one of them, for example. And we can drill down into any one of these topics. So if we, if we drill down into cardiovascular events we can see just the mentions across all the sites there so we've got different doctors blogs we see Medscape in there we see uh, various blogspot blogs um, and so again some doctor doc content in there specifically talking about the topic of cardiovascular events And again, we can scroll down and see these. And we can go into the detail of any of these from here. Uh, we might be interested in knowing who's who's who's, who's uh, talking about these topics. Uh, we might be interested in knowing uh, broadly what the topics are about and so on. So again, if we click on one of these particular entries, it'll pull up the blog entry itself. And again, we can categorize it and we can decide whether we think this is a, a positive or negative uh, a, a reference, for example, and categorize it for future uh, reference. And there are a number of tools within uh, Creation Pinpoint for sort of managing workflow, assigning follow-up to individual people and so on, if you want to uh, use it as an engagement platform even. Um, but right now, we're just using it to, to study the data and to see what's in there. So we can also look within the mentions, all the mentions that are there, and we can search. Here, we're searching for, for GLP-1. Um, so we might look for a particular treatment type. Uh, um, some people use the tools to look for um, particular um, uh, drugs or products being discussed or treatment types or other areas of concern and so on. So we can change this to anything. We can look within all our data here on conversations about diabetes by healthcare professionals. We can sub-search within that. So here we're searching for DPP-4 and we can see uh, any mention specifically of DPP-4 and again, we can combine keywords within these searches and so on. So we can pull up uh, a blog entry discussing, in fact, this is discussion, it's pulled up other within that entry, also other, other diabetes-related uh, keywords in there as well. So now let's have a look at another um, component of the dashboard. This is looking specifically at just Twitter. We see by far the greatest volume of conversation on Twitter versus other social media channels. So here we've pulled out just the Twitter conversations, and you saw there 30K. Over the course of this is conversations over the last year, actually, as you see, over the 12-month period, 30,000 uh, com uh, discussions, conversations, mentions of diabetes-related topics on Twitter by healthcare professionals. And we can see month by month, um, in recent months, there, March, February, January 2013, uh, there's been a significant growth in uh, mentions. And again, we can break this down into topics. This is a look at November, and we see World Diabetes Day um, as a bold, uh, as a large topic within that November, where you see a significant peak of volume in November itself. Of course, being discussed, that would be, we would expect that to be discussed by, by patients as well as uh, healthcare professionals. And again, we can go into the topic cloud for uh, Twitter discussion. This is a very global view here. So this is right the way across worldwide. And we do see individual mentions of, uh, here we see Sanofi. Sanofi has been um, very proactive in engaging uh, the diabetes community, including healthcare professionals, as we see. So it's actually among the top words being mentioned by doctors talking about diabetes-related topics. But that's global. Maybe we want to look at a particular region. So let's break this down, uh, filter it down by location for, for example, the United States. And let's see, OK, if they were the, the global topics, what are the kinds of topics being discussed in the United States by doctors on Twitter relating to diabetes? And we see certain keywords, weight loss there. We see diabetes risk. So the actual, uh, the overall topic cloud 
uh, varies according to where in the world we're looking. Let's let's look at a different region. Let's look at somewhere like India and see doctors talking about diabetes in India. We might expect the volume overall of doctors talking about diabetes to be lower in India because there are less maybe healthcare professionals on on uh, on Twitter than there are in the US. N nevertheless, we do see an extensive global coverage. So we're seeing enough data here to uh, to really see a difference in the kind of topics being discussed versus uh, what's being discussed in other areas of the world. Uh, this Twitter tab is quite useful. It just gives us um, interesting glimpses into the most mentioned tweeters, for example. Here we see Diabetes UK uh, right up there. A lot of doctors talking about Diabetes UK, again, Diabetes Sanofi. And then individual usernames, some of which are doctors and some of which are, are patients or uh, maybe advocacy groups. So that's just a quick look at the tool itself and the kind of things that we can do. Um, Thanks for uh, listening and uh, taking part in this. And um, there's my contact details if you want to find out more, uh, creationpinpoint.com.